For the warm welcome, my name is Stefan Schmidt. I'm responsible at Dockiver for product management. And you have heard a lot of stuff now, a lot of very great improvements of Dockiver 7. Um, I will focus on the last thing, I will show it. I have some slides which I will go through very quickly and then I will just show it to you and you get an own impression how it looks like and how it behaves. The first area, usability and uh, ease of use, Mike already said, we worked on several areas, mainly configuration of the system, user management, auto-index document processing. We have a new access to auditing, so um, in Docuver you could use the protocol or the, the agents to uh, protocol all the activities in the system already up to now, but it's much easier now, much easier to set up, but also much easier to access. We have a new mobile app which allows us to be much more responsive, faster, even gives us a good uh, background for offline functionality, which we see very important and we will also see uh, in a uh, short future. Then on the cloud side, we have a new tool which allows us to uh, uh, synchronize with active directories. So you can install this tool through the desktop apps. <laughs> That's the first step into a complete AD integration. So first of all, you can synchronize the users, you can match groups, and it's very easy to set up because it runs, your, uh, runs in your local network, so it can easily connect to the AD servers, but on the other side, using uh, secure HTTP channels to connect to a Docker system, so the whole setup, no hassling around with firewalls and anything, so you just install it, and usually it runs out of the box. Then on the functionality side, I mean also an important topic for us, uh, we have a new mode for auto-index, which means if you store a document, auto-index is called for the single document, but it runs right away. So it works like the workflow, so you can set up criteria when this process should start. If you then store a document with the correct information, then auto-index starts and just indexes the documents within uh, parts of a second and you get the fully indexed document right away. Then on the form side, we also extended this. You know that we have strong focus on forms. We want to extend it. We want to build in more functionality, cover more use cases. One is we have now extended options to form a text, even add links to forms. We have now an option to dynamically show fields or give certain properties to fields, like it is required or it is read-only. And we have put the general expressions to fields like if you want a user to enter an email address or telephone number, then you can ensure that the format of this email and telephone number is correct. Then we have one more addition to connect to Outlook. We call it single instancing. So you now if several people get the same email uh, and all the people are saving this email, you have a lot of redundant data in your file cabinets. Even uh, more difficult to find the data later on if you get several hits for one topic or one search, one retrieval. So you can now take this unique ID which is provided by the Exchange server, or Office 365, and store it to a Docker field and then just use the regular, regular document mechanisms to uh, ensure that this email is unique and that people only store the same email once. And on the quality side, last but not least, um, we have a new, uh, we have increased the accuracy for intelligent indexing. So that's a lot of stuff which is not always seen in the front end, but you can see the results. And you can see it here, the accuracy increased by 2 to 12%. Um, maybe 2% sounds not that uh, dramatically, but if you look at the numbers, um, we have so many documents indexed by intelligent indexing that even small increases are bringing a, bit, a big benefit to the users. So at the moment, we are indexing around 2 million documents per month on all of our intelligent indexing systems. This means around 6 million fields, indexing fields. Overall, that saves per month around 1,000 man days of work. And finally, with all the improvements that we did, we get additional 200,000 correct indexed fields per month. 
So we are still working on this. We're always trying to increase the quality of uh, intelligent indexing. And here you can see some numbers which show the results. And also you can see it then in the field and the users can feel it because they, they get much better results. And last but not least, the setup for on-premise. Not only we put a lot of effort in deployment for the cloud systems, we also put effort to make the installation of Docker systems on-premise systems easier. One big improvement is that you can now, you have a much more simplified method of install it on several machines. So you are not choosing the single Docker services, which is very technical. We have now bundled the services into front-end and back-end part, and you just choose if you need a front-end or back-end server. And all this is based on the experience that we got from the cloud system. So this means if you have a customer who wants to scale out the system and wants to have one back-end, one front-end server, or even more, then they're using more or less the same setup of services like we do in the cloud, and they also benefit from all the experiences that we made in the cloud. Of course, if you want to do it individually, you can. So this server setup is not preventing this, but uh, usually I would say in almost 100% of the cases, you run very well if you use the suggestions that we make in the setup. And now, enough talked about the news. Go to the demo and show it. And I want to start with the configurators, starting this user management. It's now moved into the web client configurations. And you can see it looks, <laughs> it locked me out, but no problem. <laughs> Maybe you have seen this already once. Um, it shows the users uh, which are present in the web interface like you know it. What we tried is to not only bring it to the web browser, but also to have a strong look at the use cases, which are very obvious. I want to create a new user. I want to change a user. I want to give additional permissions to him and make it as easy as possible for the one who is responsible for user management to set it up or to change it. And I will just create a user here. Name it Stefan. I have to choose title, first name, last name. So, doing this. Enter an email address. And then you can see already one new improvement that we have. So far, usually you're providing a password for a user, and then of course, you somehow have to transfer this password to the user. And of course, the user has to change the password because normally users don't want the admin to know the password. Now it's much easier. You can select here, request user by email to activate account and set password. This means you don't have to do anything more. You just create the user and welcome email is sent out to the user saying, dear Stefan Schmidt, welcome to, Ador to the Docuware system. Please click on this link. You can set your password and activate your account. So there's nothing more to do for the admin, just using this option and the user gets, uh, can do everything what he needs to access the Docker system. Of course, you can also set manually a password if you want to do this, so that works like before. And you just type in the password, repeat it. Then you can create a document tray, set out of office settings, so everything that you know from the current user management. Then you can assign groups, and that now is the whole flow that you need to go through or you can go through to set up a user completely. You don't have to go anywhere else. You will see it later on, not for stamps, not for dialogues, not for file cabinet profiles. Everything can be done here from one central place, and you just go through the different areas, and you can set up a user completely or change it if you want for an existing user. I will put me now to the HR department, already set some roles for me. You can see on the right side here um, an exclamation mark assigned by. I will show you later on where this comes from. That's again one option which helps you to see where the rights for a user come from. 
and just make it more easy to set it up and maintain them. I also now said I want to be a power user and if I want to assign functions directly to a user, I cannot only add him to a profile but also just check this box here and you can see these are all the different permissions that a user can have and I can easily select them one by one. Now going back to this exclamation mark, that's an information that this user has already certain rights coming from either groups or roles or other profiles and make it easier for you to understand if a user can access uh, an area of Docuver or even cannot access uh, if there are any rights coming from other areas. In this case, you can see that the access to audit reports is already granted to this user and it's coming from my uh, function profile power user. So this means if I don't want to, uh, don't want Stefan to have access to the audit uh, area, then I just, I have to take this role away from him. The same for file cabinet profiles. I can select all the profiles which are available. There are already some pre-selected for me. It's the same for dialogues. I can give all the available dialogues. Um, and finally also the stamps. And if you went through the different areas, just save the user and the user is created and of course in my list. Also here in the overview you see some improvements. We built in a very powerful search function and filtering. So at the moment I only have six users but like Michael said you can have several hundreds, even thousands of users. We did tests uh, with a very high number of users, up to 50,000 users in one system. Of course, usually you don't want to scroll through this list and search for users. So I'm just start typing and look for Stefan. You can see that it offers me uh, as a username, but you also can search for parts of the email address. So if I want to have all the users with an email address DocuWare, I can also type parts of the email address and get easy access to all of these users. In addition, um, there are some maintenance functions here. If a user is locked because the password was entered uh, several times incorrectly, you can unlock it from here. You can activate, deactivate the user. You can a quick overview about the roles where our user is in. And finally, you can uh, edit the user or even copy a user and get all the settings for user and then just uh, change the name and uh, the personal information. So overall, that should enable people who set up the system, you as partners, but also users by themselves to do a very, to make it very simple to manage the users. So the first steps and the next ideas or the next topics that we have on the roadmaps is also to include the profile group and role management here in this area. Then the next bigger topic is auto-index. Most of you know that auto-index is one of the most used tools that we have in DocuWare to get information to a document. Again, here you get an overview. I want to create a new configuration. I'm asked for credentials um, so that the system knows what I'm allowed to access. First, I'm starting with defining where the document uh, where the auto-index job should run in. So the file cabinet, it's here in my document pool. You can see I have different options how the job should be started. And already here you can see this new option which is called file cabinet event. So I can define if a job should be started for new or change documents. And then I can even set a filter on this because I don't want to run it on any document, but I want in my case only run it maybe on contracts. So I say if, if the document type is contracts and maybe if the status is new, then I want to have the job started and doing the indexing on this document. In the next tab, I uh, give, uh, I set the configuration for the data. I can use external databases, text file, file cabinets, even if I want to. I choose external database, that's also one of the most used uh, settings. Choosing, for example, one of my DocuWare uh, connections here, choosing one of the tables, 
Um, I can even filter the results just to make it, to boost the performance. If there are many uh, entries in my file kmat, you can see there's a preview, so you can check even if you access the right data and just click on OK and you have set up the data source. Then defining the match code, that's also something which is not new, so was the same like before. So which data should match in external database and Docuware? You define what happens if you find multiple matches and you define what happens if you have no matches. In the next step, you do a signing of data. So I want to have my company field filled with the column company from my um, external data source. Of course, you can add many more fields here, as many as you need, and so set up the assigning of data. On the last tab, you can decide if you want to write back to the database. So if you want to set a certain records to indexed or to booked or to approved, you can do this right here. Um, can say what should happen for matches and what should happen for no matches. Also, this is known functionality, but easier to use. If you choose one of the options, you even get more uh, options to set it up. So it works from functionality the same, like you know from auto-index, but it, it's much easier to use. And again, you save your job and you get it here in the overview. In my first job, you can see already, I have some information here, last run, I can access the log file, set it active, inactive, or even start it manually once uh, here in the overview. The next bigger area where we see improvements is document processing. The whole configuration for reading out barcodes, splitting documents, uh, do zone low OCR is now put to one place. So anytime, no matter if you scan the document, if you import it, you can set up the configuration here at one place and then assign it to the different areas. So I'm again creating a new configuration called invoices. I have to choose now where it comes from, scanner, folder, printer. That's just defining which options I have available. So if I choose, for example, folder, I have some more options available than it comes from a scanner. I'm choosing now file, uh, sample file from my file system. The document is uploaded, it's already prepared, so OCR is done on the document so they can I work on it. I choose where I want to put it, either document tray or file cabinet. I want to put it to the file cabinet. I define the processing, so like you know, you can just mark an area, then put it to a field, can choose what you want to read out. I can define the splitting, for example, split based always on a barcode. It already informs me that a barcode was found, so the system recognized this C25 interleaved, that's correct. And I can do all the options that you know from the document processing so far. Even there are some, let's say, convenience features. For example, I don't want to always uh, make the rectangle as big as the whole page. I just click this little checkbox here and then the barcode is detected on the whole page, not only in a certain area. You can also then use the letterhead functions just to uh, have a letter and uh, letterhead underlined on the document. And finally, you set the permissions and who should be able to use it, who should maybe be able to administrate it. And in a few very simple steps, you have set up the complete configuration and now you can use it. Oh, I used it already. I call it just invoices two. I'm not very smart, but. Uh, working and so it's set up, you can set it to active or inactive and you have it available here. And last but not least, I want to show you the new audit reports. Again here you can find it in the configuration. We have three areas of auditing, so you can see two because my role that I have is an organization administrator, so I can see the organization logging and the file cabinet logging. Um, here in this overview, you can easily uh, define what should be logged. So for the organization, I can define if I want to 
log configuration changes and user login logouts. I get an overview, how many entries do I have? And of course, I can go into the system and you can see what I did. So I logged in, I logged off, I created my invoices to processing configuration. And again, I see all the activities here. I can also go into the document pool log and you can see what happened today. I added some settings. If I just expand the time frame, I can see much more entries, but I cannot only see when I edited settings, but also if I edited the document. So here in this case, I changed some index data and you can even see which data was changed. So you can see the previous value and you can see the new value. So all the activities which uh, are happening in the Docker system are now locked here at this central place. You can download this as CSV, so you can do much more uh, analytics or evaluations, filtering, grouping on this. And it's just downloaded as a CSV and you can load it into Excel or whatever BI tool to work on this data. But that's not the only. <laughs> yeah, thank you. But it comes even better because that's not the only way <laughs> where you can access the auditing. Even, I mean, for users, it's not always, not always that simple to go into any uh, admin console to find out what happened to a document. So, of course, now you can also access the history of one single document through the regular client. And I can just store a document here, um, do some very basic indexing, and store it to my file cabinet. And if I oh, do a retrieval now and look what I stored today, I have one document, of course, with my index data. I just for demonstration change an index entry here, say, contact the Stefan and save it. And then I can easily uh, access the history of the document. I can see the workflow history, so what happened uh, in a certain process to the document, but I can also see the document history. So you can see easily who changed the document. And of course, also you have the same information, so you can see which index data was changed. So you have a pretty clear uh, view on the audit trail of a document. Again, download a CSV, and everything is bound to permission. So this means, of course, you can set up uh, who should be able to access this audit trail or if people should not be able to access it. And there's one last area which I want to show that's the last big improvement uh, what we did, it's forms. And already Michael teased it a little bit. Um, there are some new functions in forms, what you can use. And just to show it, I have a little use case, it's employee onboarding. I just call it onboarding and create a very simple form here. I add in first name and maybe a last name, which people have to enter. And in my case, I want to ask people if they would like to provide a personal telephone number just in case of emergencies or very important uh, calls. So I'm adding a multiple choice question here and just call it emergency phone. There are not three, but only two options. One is yes, one is no, and the third one I delete. So nothing special for now. Of course, if someone says, yes, I want to provide a telephone number, I want to give the option to enter it. So I say, Please enter your phone number here. Oh. 
And if I do this for the whole onboarding form, that can be quite long and it gets a little bit complicated because you see a lot of information which you may not need. So what you can do now, you can put a certain behavior to a field. So this means there is a new drop down here and as I don't have defined one yet, I will just do it, add a new one and this field behavior I call emergency number And now I can define what should happen. And this field should, based, should be based on um, the selection of emergency phone. So this means if someone selected yes, I said that should be oh, not hidden but required. But if it's not selected, if not yes is selected, then it should just be hidden. So people should even not see it. And I just define this. And if I do now the preview, you can see that the field is not available yet. I can enter my first last name. If I say no, nothing happens. But if I say yes, then the number shows up and I'm able to enter it. <laughs> Again, that's not all. So I even <laughs> can go one step further and say, okay, it's nice that you can enter your phone number, but if you let people enter their phone number without any instruction, usually that ends up in a mess because telephone numbers can be so different and people just typing numbers, some typing uh, separators, whatever. It's now also very simple to just add a field mask to this phone number and we are just using the field, mask with, uh, field masks which are already available in DocuBear and for example, I take the phone number international and in addition, I also adding some new, um, some new control which is called fixed text and that enables me now to even do some more formatting. You can see, you can change the font color, bold, italic, but I can also add a link. I can say here, um, add a link here. The link is called click me. and I can enter whatever URL I want, docuware.com, and then just add for more instructions and add it to my, my form. But again, here I don't want to show it any time. I only want to show it if people should uh, uh, if people should enter the emergency phone number. So I simply also choose here the behavior which is already available. I don't have to create it new of course. And if I now start the preview, you can see again it's only showing my fields if I click on yes. You get the same behavior like you know from the web client. So it gives me already some hints how I should enter a phone number if I start typing and I'm not correct, it says, oh, please enter the valid format and I can now enter a valid format. It turns into blue and again, here you can see my advanced text. So I have here my click me for more instructions and you can see on the top, on the bottom left that it refers to the URL which I entered. Of course, you can uh, linked to a fixed, so a static page, but also you can use, for example, Docuver URL integration to link even to a stored document, which you are maintaining in your Docuver system, and then just provide the instructions through a Docuver file cabinet. So that's the main use on the Docuver side, um, mainly functionality, usability. I hope you liked it. Uh, I also, I think, uh, you will be as excited about DocuWare 7 as we are. So we are very proud of this version. We see it really as a big milestone on the technical side, but also uh, providing much more usability, better functionality. And yeah, you will see it soon in May. And I wish you a lot of fun and thanks for your attention. <laughs>